Welcome to Cover Slaves, a show we don't really post for two years because of a pandemic <laughs> that's seeming somewhat suspect. <laughs> Welcome uh, back, guys. Uh, to the post-edition show. Post-edition show. Post-game show. Uh, <laughs> we've been doing a lot of Titanicus content. Uh, shooting it's impossible. Yeah. It's a very back-and-forth alternating activation game, so we've tried to do videos about it. But now there's some new developments that perhaps Cleary could fill us in on mm -hmm. regarding Her Her's Heresy. Well, I guess they're, they're 30K. They're not super new anymore, but yeah. There was uh, leaks. Obviously, Leaked. within the last few weeks, um, the third playtest version rules leaked of the core rules and the Loyalist book. Uh, the traders had their first phase ones kind of leaked. Uh, there was a speculated five playtest versions total um so this might be kind of middle of the pack give us some rope to hang ourselves we're only dealing with what we know yeah exactly so uh shit might change um we also i wouldn't come to us to be informed this is mostly opinion this is kind of just what we think of the least. yeah this is we're gonna again, take it part by part but i wouldn't i wouldn't quote us there's a lot of rules yes um a lot of changes there's a lot of changes there's stuff we might have missed um and some shit might be, like, obviously imbalanced. It might be changed later for the better. Uh, it might be a design mandate. So yeah, we can only go on what we've seen, and you've seen yeah. more than I have. So. Yeah, so... Um, do I start with the good news? I mean, yeah, the good news is there's plastic stuff. Yes. Yeah. Some of which doesn't look terrible. <laughs> yeah, I, I think people are a little crazy about the Mark VI stuff. I'm, I'm kind of indifferent. Um, I, I, I kind of like them. There's aspects I... Don't the older Marines the last time they did plastics you could swap like if you didn't care about if you didn't care about I was less caring about the marks, but you could like you could make an absurd thing you could do like half iron armor half yeah. whatever you want right the new ones are a little more monoposed but they're cool I think what everyone's happy about is plastic tanks that yeah. used to weigh a ton in resin like the uh, Spartan oh yeah I don't know if you're gonna save any money we don't know how much it's gonna so, cost fun but... fact I did a kind of a comparison from back in the day so right. twenty. 16, I bought <clears throat> three rhinos with the upgrade kits from Fortual, uh, and I could see how much I paid for it in pounds, uh, and it translated to, at the exchange rate, um, about 245 Canadian. Oh my god. Um, and they also, sorry, it was four, it was four of them. They put a lot of these on last, last year's yeah. to buy as but, well, so. But, I'm, my, my point I'm actually going to make is that today, if I buy four plastic Rhinos that we've had for years and years from yes, the Games yeah. Workshop, I will pay two hundred and forty dollars Canadian for those. So four inflation models. and price hikes are kind of yeah. yeah. Um, so if you want to talk about ones with upgrade kits, this is about one seventy dollars. Yeah, you're gonna be paying a premium price for the plastic. I think for me, the silver lining, what's subjectively cool for people who have varying opinions on the new edition or whatever. If you're if you're in love with the old edition, the original edition of Modern Heresy, you're getting new models. You're yeah. losing some. My hope would be it's the models you don't have. If we all of a sudden got a plastic saber, I don't think anyone would be complaining or stuff like that. Yeah. Right. Hell, maybe a plastic javelin one day. Um, to me, I think that's sort of the best news. Is the new stuff. I'm not a big fan of the new rules. I don't want to poison the well. We're going to discuss the intricacies oh, yeah. of why that may be. Um, but I don't want anyone to is excited to not be excited. We're more cautiously yeah. optimistic about some things, less so others. Definitely. We're, um, we're, uh, I want to just check we're still recording. Yeah. I'm going yeah. to do this periodically just because I know I can cut it. I was just checking to see if we're still recording. Um, we basically just talked about how there's new models, and we're going to get more into the specifics of the rumors in the change yeah. to uh, Horus Heresy 2.0. Yeah, I guess, uh, again, the... Important thing to note is that the, the initial rumors that we saw back in the day was that, you know, it's going to be a tweaked 7th edition. It's going to be tweaked 7th. Yeah. Um, obviously, if you care about Horse Heresy and you've seen anything about uh, the new rules, and unless you're stuck on the Crusade and Heresy Facebook group exclusively where they ban you for talking about that, that would not um, you'll know that... Uh, <laughs> It's very much not just tweet seventh. It's it's like a that seven was marketing speak. I think. Yeah, I think it was kind of well. 
maybe it was it was said by people who don't really remember seventh edition. You know, it's been they don't really yes, play thirty k. Yeah. It's been a long time since they played seventh. They don't really get seventh. One consensus I think I've seen, and I'm not going to say this is like fifty percent of people who played back in seventh. People look back with rose-colored glasses, certainly, but it felt like seventh worked okay. It's just when they started doing the decurions and and free stuff, you know, like, I mean, oh, okay, it's an 18, yeah, 1850 uh, list with, like, 2250 in it. I think that's when everyone's tolerances sort of waned. And you saw the tournaments, eh? Like, you just, people couldn't carry all the shit, and they'd get three turns in. Oh, so the game kind of fell under its same thing about ninth right now. Oh, for sure. Uh, oh, yeah. But, um, anyway, so it's it's more of a seventh and eighth, the edition plus hybrid. Yeah. Um, I just mean to, and you say seventh to some people, like that's what they remember. Yeah. They played the tail. End yeah. And so they didn't play where it was kind of good. Yeah. So uh, the rules can be very familiar. They can also be very different. Uh, so I guess we'll start with the, the movement phase. Uh, yeah, it's, so it's the first it's one. It's the first phase. Yep. So movement has a value now um, per data sheet. Uh, the base marine movement value is now seven, up from six. Um, for some reason. For some reason, I I know a lot of people have really wanted a bespoke movement stat. I don't really care either way. It doesn't. I liked integers of six. That seemed to work pretty. It's pretty well. clean. I think this ties into a bigger thing, which is. Unit types were something that perhaps people don't love. If they were to, if they were to start in ninth and move to older forty k, they go, "What's all these different unit types and all their restrictions or how they move?" And like a lot of that was to delineate the difference between like a guy on a horse and a guy on a flying uh, uh, jet back or jet bike, right? And these things sort of slowly peeled back and peeled back in forty k to be less and less of a thing. You basically didn't fly or you did. But back in the day, there was much more difference, like a tank that was heavy versus a tank that was... The, yeah. There was a lot of um, nitty-gritty, because you didn't have the movement stats as a stat, right? So someone who wanted to learn that way kind of couldn't. But the, the good thing, though, is once you learned the unit types, you didn't have to learn them again. Yeah, I'll definitely say that. So uh, as a standard, like when you, when you look at a new unit rule, you go, oh, it's this. Yeah. And a lot of that you already knew, just like the USRs. Uh, I'll definitely say that for me, kind of dipping in and out of 40k... Um, I get thrown off all the time by Bespoke movement yeah. values that I'm not expecting. Oh, that thing moves nine. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's why? Oh, well, because like, it does. Well, it's, it's just like oh shit! Like, like I, I'm subconsciously yeah. always thinking six, maybe twelve. But anyway, everything moves a different value now. Uh, yeah. Not not to be a dead horse. I don't think there'd be anything wrong with that. For example, if we're talking pretending it was just seventh, if they just took its movement stats and made them a stat, meaning it was still the original ones from that unit type yeah. and they just listed them. I don't think there's a problem with that. But as we see, the more you disconnect it from a standard and you just make it a unit stat, the more random it's going to be. This one moves five. This one moves seven. Yeah. And I again, don't like it. You can... There, there's a... It works up until it doesn't. Kind of. So... But here's the thing too. It, it, it means that a new rules writer does not be familiar at all with the standards. And that's what it feels like. It feels like a person who doesn't play the game I play is writing rules for it. So and that may be the yeah, case. Let's let's talk about the value. So a normal yeah. tactical marine, he can move seven inches. Seven inches. Seven inches. Across, boom. Really, let's say. Um, you might want to measure. Yeah. <laughs> if you choose to activate your jump pack, yeah, you get set to twelve. Okay. So more than um, seven, we agree. Yeah. A rhino can move. 14 at its maximum speed. Which is two more than it used to, Yeah, I guess. Um, and a javelin can also move 14 inches. Weird. I thought a javelin was a fast flying unit, clearly, that skims over the ground. I, yeah. It's what like, happened? Well, <laughs> I don't know is the best answer because... Um, the javelin is not very fast anymore. It can charge because it's uh, now cavalry. It's it's they've now not made it a vehicle. It's a similar to which is edition. odd because it's not a small model. Yeah, similar to eighth and ninth <laughs> it's edition. It's a flying rhino. Um, 
it now has like a toughness value and it has it can attack in melee uh it's more similar to the what to an attack, attack bike, bike. yeah exactly it? so it's it's like a floating attack bike yeah. um however there's some oddities that are introduced um so running is now done in the movement phase it's not done in the shooting phase when you activate your unit to move you can decide then and there if you want to run or not. Uh, it is not a random dice roll of increased movement. It is by your initiative value. So a running tactical marine would go 11 inches. Um, can I stop you there? Yeah. We, we've got plenty of players over the years who had that in 40k2 where they want to just run and get ahead of it. They, yeah. They're like, listen, I, I know what this unit's doing. You mind if I just run it now? In years past where it was a pure turn-based game, that kind of didn't really matter you'd get weird situations like weapon scatters and other stuff so in a tournament i kind of say like no wait yeah. wait wait to the other phase just because things might change but that's still how i feel of the reason i wouldn't choose to do it personally was i understand causality what i might choose to do with any one thing can change over the course of my turn based on how successful the turn is right like what you might want to target at the start of the turn might not be at the same at the end when half your shots mm -hmm. have failed and so on but like the concern there is of course it's making it kind of cleaner and i guess because We'll get to the interactions that are coming. So maybe it's better for the changes that they're introducing, but I don't but think it's... But there's a reason why they're introducing... There's a reason. And changes. we'll get to that. I'm just going to double so, check real quick. For sure. Sorry, for You'll notice cuts occasionally. I uh, I can't verify if the camera's still recording, so I keep having to get up to make sure we're... Uh, we're not talking into dead air. So anyway, clearly we were discussing movement. Yeah, and uh, running how it is decided when you... Initially, go to activate a movement uh, unit. In, in the movement phase, phase the it's a, a set value based on uh, the lowest initiative value in the unit. So if you have a character with him, he doesn't boost the run move. Um, jump units, like the chaplain here, if you use your jump pack, you don't get to run. Um, but you get to avoid difficult terrain. Uh, for the movement, if you for the movement. Hobby. Yeah, um, and you suffer dangers if you land in it. That's right. Uh, That's the speaking point. of difficult terrain, it is for people who are used to 9th edition, exactly how it works in 9th, which is um, instead of rolling two dice and picking the highest, it's a flat minus two to your movement value. So again, they're cleaning up, I guess, the, the movement phase interactions. There's less dice rolling. It's very math-based. You so, add or subtract a set value. Up to this point, I guess, with the exception of the jump troop, we've spoken about movement just in terms of sheer distance you can yeah. move, but not really pathing, which way you may have to go. That's where it's a problem. Uh, I guess we can get into that with the lack there of rules or terrain. Or... Yeah, so... Um, start with the jump troop, if you want. So... Unlike ninth, because I'm doing a lot of comparisons to ninth, because yes, yeah, a lot of mechanics. Um, ninth actually does have rules for ruins. Uh, basically, uh, unless you can fly or you're in infantry, you cannot go through the walls. You, Which you think kind of makes yeah, sense. You have to go around. You don't have Lego terrain. Um, the rhino can't drive through the terrain. It would have to go around. It can't drive up the terrain and land on top. Um, seventh edition has no terrain rules. This is also a problem with thirty k. I want to make that clear. That's not just a problem with second edition. It's just something they haven't addressed with second edition. Yeah, they haven't. They haven't. For example, six right before seventh had really detailed terrain rules, especially for ruins. We, for our own tournaments for thirty k, would use those rules. Yeah, because they would tell you like what can and can't be on the upper floors of a ruin. Uh, how doors work, how assaults work, all that. Because there's a lot going on. Yeah. And as we know, all ruins aren't created equal. This was like the simplest one we could yeah. whip up from the collection. But like some of them were pretty involved, right? A lot of floors, a lot of shit. And um, what we thought would happen with second edition is they'd address this, right? Yeah. Because when we, when we looked at seventh, we're like, why can, a, why can a rhino drive up into a ruin? Yeah. And that seems to unfortunately be the case still with second edition horse hairs. Um. It does, you know, I, I did look at the terrain rules. So I was trying to, like, glean anything I could. And it yeah. does seem like the terrain and mission rules are written in a way to allow people to make their own out of them. I think However, um, no one ever did. 
Yeah, and except again, for us. Well, <laughs> that or, or we do, and that means that we're not incongruent with anyone else we want to play, yeah. or we have to have a really long conversation about how we do terrain rules. Um, but definitely, like, comparing it to, like, the ninth edition rules for terrain, that has a very, like, ruins have X, Y, and Z terrain rules attached to them. Yeah. Uh, so that's how everyone plays them. Ruins basically don't have anything but area terrain um, right. in the current rules. And there's the vibe that you can attach. You decide on your own. You talk yes. about it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I want the walls to be impassable. Uh, and then the, the floors function as ruins, that kind of thing. The other problem, uh, I'm going to speak while I get up. <laughs> the other problem is when you're doing area terrain, as Cleary was saying, uh, there's a big difference between a ruin that is on a base yeah. and the one you see there that is not on a base, right? Yeah. Or so there wasn't six, at least. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Um, but I guess we could argue is the two guys they see right there technically aren't in cover other than from a certain angle, right? Because they're yeah. not, like, in it. They're, they're sort of... Anyway, we're getting technical, but that's the point. Um, sorry. <laughs> this would be a problem, though, right, for area terrain? Because all of a sudden, like... He's getting cover for like being in the terrain, yeah. right? We're back to we're back to old problems. So, uh, yeah, verticality, movement, um, pathing in general, pathing in general, it's an issue. If you care about those things, care about those things. Uh, but again, again, we do. Like that's kind of the whole channel. I think, ironically, so. uh, more people in ninth might care about it than actual. That might, 30K well, things. that might be one of the upsides, eh? Because we can we can have our criticisms of ninth, but I at least see they see terrain as something that has to be contended with, not just like it's up to you guys. Yeah, <laughs> kill each other. You know, um, <laughs> that's not the best way to make friends. So, yeah, difficult terrain. Uh, basically, all the the core movement stuff is very clean, very map based. You either get a lot plus of du doubling and passing, like this is fourteen, this is seven. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Kind of going back to running, uh, vehicles used to have a version of running going flat out. Uh, you do it instead of shooting. You yeah. get a bonus six to your movement most of the time. Yeah. Uh, only fast vehicles could do that now. So while a rhino is up to 14 inches of movement, um, it can never go faster than that. So at least in some ways then the, the javelin may be able to move again, right? No. Oh. Uh, <laughs> this so is looking The good. javelin has a, a subtype attached to it called heavy. Uh, previously, you might know this rule as hardened armor uh, from the breachers. Right. And it's kind of tweaked a bit now. So you, you get to reroll all of your armor saves against blast and template weapons. Super. Right. Uh, but you Why can't... I have an armor save is another point, but yeah. <laughs> uh, no, so but this applies to many different things. Sure, that sure, sure. Breaches. I just meant the javelin. Yeah, yeah, for the javelin. Uh, but you cannot run. Oh. Um, so the javelin is stuck at 14 inches for its movement. Uh, and if you were familiar with it before in first edition heresy, you'd know that it could go up to 36 in one. So let me understand this clearly, if I have you correctly. Yeah. Uh, I move 7 with my dude, yes. I move 14 with him, yeah. faster. But then he can move, what, 7 again if he runs? He can move 4. Oh, okay, so not, okay. But not 7. Okay, right. yeah. so it's still a little... Um, it's it's 3 inches faster than a power armored space marine. Yeah. Um, Sweet. I know if we I had the model, those. we would then compare it to the saber tank, which can move a natural 18 inches. Um, Which, you know, a tracked vehicle when it's not... Uh, yeah. Uh, and as a fast vehicle, it can actually move up to double its movement by going flat out. So the Sabre can move 36 inches. I don't think they played this game. Um, <laughs> there is a small risk to injuring itself when you go flat out. Uh, on like 1 and 6, you take a whole point and you get shaken. Uh, and you can only snap shoot when you do it. But... Uh, you, you know, there, there's a bit of a disconnect with a little bit. certain movement values, certain speeds. I personally have the feeling someone got, they lost a lot of games to 
javelins contesting their objectives. Um, Perhaps, yeah. They're, they're a good <laughs> I, unit. Yeah, that's a, that's a, it's a good play, but I think, the, I think someone got very upset at that unit. Part of the core balance of this game is very often, Marine on Marine, so very often, if a certain unit does well against you, nothing in theory prevented you from acquiring it, painting it, and running it yourself, other than maybe its availability. Yeah. But, uh, that, that was always a kind of a core thing, and it seems like I guess whoever wrote these rules was had a bone to pick with javelins, as you're saying. Yeah. Seems like um, and I guess the last thing that we're really talking about movement speed is that uh, it has a knock-on effect into the charge phase. Yes. Um, so depending on your movement value, if it's over certain thresholds, and I can only remember 8 and 13. Uh, so if you're over, if you're if you move 8 inches, you get plus one to your charge range, or not your charge range, your charge roll in the charge phase. Um, and if you're over 13, you get plus three. I don't remember when it becomes plus two, um, but uh, basically the faster you move, the faster you charge. Uh, that also applies They're to- They're trying to model like momentum, I guess, yeah. or something. Um, so jump packs, when you choose to use your jump pack and you get set to 12, that means you get uh, plus two, I'm pretty sure, to your charge roll. Uh, the javelin would get a faster charge. To its charge roll. To its charge roll because it is basically an attack bike that hovers. Super. Um, That's why I took these, so you get stuck in combat. Yeah. Thanks, guys. I like that you play this game. That you roll but, uh, yeah, so that's the, kind of like the movement changes. Um, yeah. Less random... Less dice rolling, uh, so like there's no dice rolling for difficult, there's no dice rolling for running. Um, dangerous terrain, I guess, is the only place where there's dice rolling. Uh, it now just ignores armor saves. There's arguments to be made for both. I, I know everyone doesn't love random. Where we can, I think, all agree random doesn't work great is when it's like, this weapon does d6 shots yeah, over feels bad. five or six turns, stuff oh, like yeah. that. just doesn't doesn't feel like you're playing a game. But I will say of all the games we've had with 30k, we've just learned to live with random charge. Like, like the, the point is, you're trying to get close as you the can. The charge is still random. Oh, um, yeah, I just meant, like, we've had charges at three inches where you yeah. have snake eyes. Like, like there can be spoilers, but the, the, the what makes sense is you're still trying to reduce the variables. The closer you get, the yeah. more likely you are to charge. Here's my thing, though. With how they're doing the difficult... Um, you're going to have those players that are like, well, no, I calculated I'd be in combat by this phase because I moved exactly this, so you must have cheated. That was one of the benefits of throwing the random in for running and charging was like you couldn't have those people who, who play the game who, super bad. Yeah, right? yeah. So who, like accuse you of something or them of fucking something. Uh, ironically, up. like the introduction of random charge range back into kind of the Warhammer game was uh, from fantasy. Yeah, when it went from seat seventh to eighth. Uh, because there was very much like, you know, the board is a certain distance. Yeah. You know what the movement values are. Yeah. You know exactly, like, if we both deployed on the line, there's 24 inches between us. There right. was a, definitely a lot of um, theory crafting sure. that you could do to guarantee... We've also had charges. end games where, like, a, a win, loss, or tie might come down to, like, a unit chart, uh, running at an objective to contest or score it, right? So, yeah. As much as it may suck to, like, be one inch short on a roll, like... We get why that's not a feel good thing. At least it wasn't automatic. Like, well, I got it. We're tied. So like, like there's something to watch my, for. The game. My thought on the changes is that I liked 30k mm -hmm. because both in list building and in the game, certain decisions could have really harsh consequences. Yeah. So if you wanted to like hoof it through the difficult, um, you could go your full distance, right? You could go six. You could have no problem. Yeah. You could also go one inch. And right, screwed. exactly. Yeah. Um, and that goes for, like, charging as well. Sure. Charging didn't really have consequences. You might take a shot or two from over. When, uh, when you chose to activate your jump packs, matter, yeah. right? Like, whether it was for, for charge, charge or before or for assault. To ensure the assault isn't going to be slow. Like, there's some thought put into um, it. And I guess I'm going to re-explore this opinion more as we go into different... That's true. I'm going to double check see what's yeah. recording real quick. So we, we've talked about move phase. We've talked about some of the changes. We're going to dip into psychic phase now. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, the spoilers, they, they kind of kill the psychic phase, which I think is good. Um, it was definitely weird to have a phase that might not happen if no one took psychers. So that's probably the Yeah, they, they definitely kind of brought it back to its, uh, I guess, fourth edition, third edition style. I think more fourth. 
Star Roots. Uh, I didn't really look into it a lot. I, I've never really played Thousand Suns or Demons or... Do we know if you, if you still randomize or there's some choice? No, so like... they, they've, they've streamlined the psychic trees. They're still disciplines. Okay, but, but you're, you're choosing now or...? You choose... Well, you've always chosen your discipline. Oh, okay. And what happens, but then you, you, get, have, yeah. you get a, a psychic attack now right okay. and you get a psychic power okay um the psychic attack is like a, a a weapon of some sort that you have to activate okay. to get its to be able to attack with it and then the power is a power you'll use in a prescribed time okay um so you only get basically two powers per tree um the psychic shooting attacks happen in the shooting phase so we can't comment too much about any individual power per se, but they've cleaned it up in terms of it's not a yeah. phase at least. Um, to pass a psychic power, you do a leadership test, and it, you have to pass the leadership test. Makes if sense. not, you take perils. They have changed perils. It, there's no longer a chart where you can go Super Saiyan, um, or you can get insta killed. Why not any fun? <laughs> now it does like D three wounds that ignore armor saves, but you don't have to take it on your psycho. Um, like it can hit the, the squad. So if this chaplain was a heretical psyker and he, he periled, um, it could kill the guys or you could put it on his invul save. Uh, I don't know if I dislike it. Like I could see uh, the yeah. lightning affecting the people around. Yeah. Him not so him. it's, it's, it's different. I like the change back to the previous editions that actually had psychic cars that worked well. Um, yeah. At least with this though, if he's on his own versus with people, yeah. like you have to take it versus pushing sure. it off, you know, um, something to that, I guess. So that's kind of the psychic phase. <laughs> There's, I'm sure, a lot more to talk about if you are invested in using psychers, like Thousand yeah. Sons and Word Bearers. Neither of us were. Um, but I do like trying to make a, a system that functions. Yeah. Because it didn't. <laughs> uh, I guess that's our psychic phase. Our psychic talk. phase. Yeah. Um, shooting. Shooting. Phase? Okay, so... Uh, for the shooting phase, a few things changed. It, it's hard to talk about the shooting phase without talking about the weapons. Yeah, right? it's, it's definitely harder without showing you stats or getting into um, individually. What it, as a broad stroke, I mean, just referencing the, the page they previewed with like laser weapons, right? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the camera cut out. We have no idea where, <laughs> and we'll probably be repeating ourselves. All right. So anyway, clear. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about cover. Yeah. Uh, Specifically about treating this as area terrain versus maybe more in... in yeah, so um, we'll do a quick summary. Ben's point is that the movement value has very little value if you can't use it... To your advantage. To your advantage. Um, that would mean stuff like uh, d capturing, uh, denying, contesting objectives. But what we're talking about here is getting a better angle of fire on a target. Yeah. If it doesn't matter what you can't with area terrain, why maneuver? You get into range, you shoot. So, that unfortunately kind of brings us to the next major change in the shooting phase, which is uh, wound allocation. Mm -hmm. So, how wound allocation works right now, we're going to use our nice little rhino as an example, is if you shot at this conga line, uh, and you did three wounds, and your opponent failed two of them, it would kill the first guy and the second guy. It's very simple. It's closest to furthest, uh, based on their saves. As long as they're not a terminator. Yep. Uh, <laughs> we'll or custodes. Custodes, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's very direction based. You can, if you have a two plus armor save guy in the front, you can move and shoot them from the back and try and circumvent that. Right. Uh, how it works now is take your three shots and three wounds, let's say. Uh, now I get to pick whoever I want, and they will take that entire wound pool. Great. Um, but. I, I can always pick my two plus armor sergeant, or I can pick some other guy to take the wound pool. Uh, if I think, you know, there's benefit. Um, and unfortunately Great. they've cut, in my opinion, one of the most interesting parts of, uh, yeah, it's a kind of a tangent a anecdote real quick. Yeah. Some of our new players, a great way of teaching them maneuver was like, Hey, if you, you give the artificer armor to your sergeant in your tactical squad, he can soak up fire to like anything that's not AP too. And yeah. you go, oh, I get it. If I put him in front, like he can take the bolters. Yes. Yeah. This makes it not matter. Yeah. So in my so. last game, I played my opponent. Uh, he, he was threatening my objective, 
and I moved in a way where I thought his best angle um, to shoot at them with his EP3 weapons, my surgeon could block it. And that's what ended up happening. I passed on my saves, my squad would be fine. If he had moved in a different way, one that might not have been able to contest the objective, but to try and kill the squad off, he would have been able to kill my three plus armor guys, no problem. Right. But using the new rules, if he did that, I would still always be able to take on my surgeon first. Um, and that's another uh, kind of going back to what I was saying about the movement phase. Yeah. Uh, consequences for action. So again, if I put my surgeon out first, he can tank, but my opponent can flank my squad and shoot the guys. Right. Now there's never any poor positioning consequences on my end. I will always be able to choose my surgeon first to tank the shots. Yeah. Um, I guess it's time to talk about the big change. Because I'm just going to again double check the line. Fucking talking to you there. Yeah. Sorry about all the breaks, people. We're just uh, we're running low on battery power. <laughs> so uh, uh, clearly, we're going to talk about the big changes. Okay. So, uh, most biggest change is the introduction of stratagems. Um, they're called reactions, but they're pretty much stratagems. Um, I'll know that us even calling them that may seem controversial to some. We're not trying to be. It just seems they're like they're very ones. they're very very much, similar um, in the spirit. Yeah. So uh, most of them will happen during the movement shooting or charge phases of your opponents. Uh, so the movement ones, if I get within twelve inches, you can even either choose to. Go this is the one of the core ones. The core one. So these are the core ones happened during your opponent's turn exclusively. So I'm only gonna pause you there. Yeah. Initially, it doesn't seem too bad because there's only a handful of core. There's like six. Right. So there's like two for phase. Yeah. Initially, you're going okay. I kind of see yeah. what they're getting, but there's some creep. There. So um, the first one we're on. Sorry. So yeah, reactions. You can do a total of three per phase, dependent on your warlord. Basically, giving you bonuses, maybe some more gear. Okay. You start out one. Characters. Yeah. yeah, you start out one per phase. So, um, the movement phase, if someone ends within 12, you can move your initiative value either forward or away. That's the movement phase ones. The sh yeah. yeah, and granted, that's like that's like a unit that's not like every yeah, unit. Yeah, that's it's a pretty unit. contained. Yeah, um, in the shooting phase, you can either evade, which is what going to ground and jink turn into yes evade gives you basically a five up feel no pain um no against the shooting attack right away there's a weirdness to me in limiting that only before you could go to ground for any anyone could shoot you gotta go this is gonna be bad i'll go to ground yeah so now it's like limited that's a little weird for me but keep going um it's ignored by the norse cover there's not a ton of that uh but it also notably does not prevent you from doing anything like jink and going to ground it. Right. Uh, or like self, self pinning was what. Yeah. Going to ground or was. instead, you can choose to fire back before you take casualties. Right. Um, those are the shooting phase ones, and the melee or charge phase is either Overwatch at full ballistic skill, or you can set to defend to. Uh, I think disorder their charge. Um, you may have already said intercept was somewhere in there. Right? So or those are the core. Gear dependent, yeah. I should say. So those are the core. Um, reactions. Now there's things called advanced reactions. You might recognize some like intercept given by augury scanners or you can even do it without it which is when something comes in from reserves within. So you've got the core six and you've already got a bit of mission creep yeah. when it comes to war gear like like stuff granting you intercept. Yeah. Okay. Well the war gear gives you free uses of it that exceed that previous max of right. three. Yeah. Uh, intercept you just get to shoot it does not take away your ability to shoot um, in your next turn like it currently right. does. Uh, you have stuff like uh, Death or Glory if you get rammed, which is a combination of ram and tank shock now. I do um, find it interesting they even kept ramming if they're going to turn some things into cavalry. Yeah, it's very, that's that's yeah. the whole other matter. Um, and then there's a bunch, each Legion has a specific advanced reaction it can do once per game. And these once per game ones can be very, very strong. So this is sort of the issue where it starts as something pretty innocuous. Yeah. 
quickly expands and the advanced reactions, and, and then by the end, every yeah. EGO has its own one. So, and, and if so you're not quickly turns kind into of strategies. Getting, this is where the problem starts. So, with the intercept, for example, every tactical squad can take an auger scanner. Auger scanner gives you a free use of intercept, and it also lets you exceed the normal three per phase. Right. So, if I have four units of tactical marines, my deep striker comes in, boop within range of all four, they can all intercept him. So I get shot one, two, three, four times by my opponent in their movement phase. Right. You go, okay, you know what? That could happen before if you were very bad or unlucky with your, or desperate. If you could have had a lot of intercept, yeah. It could happen. Sure. Yeah. Great. They wouldn't be shooting their next turn. Now they can. Right. And then you go, okay, you know what? I want to shoot one of their units with my plasma pistol. So you do it, you miss. They now react in their shooting phase. To return fire at you. So now you've been shot twice by your opponent, once in your movement phase, once in your shooting phase, and you go, okay, you know what? I really gotta kill that guy. He's on the objective. I'm gonna charge him. Now he overwatches you uh, at full ballistic skill. You've right. been shot three times in your opponent's phase. Um, and, and that's a little, a little silly, it, in my opinion. It reminds me of. Uh, Going all the way to third, there was this trope with like blood angels, um, <laughs> where they could just keep assaulting, yeah. And like sometimes they'd hit your line in such a way, let's like, like down like, the line, you'd consolidate three inches, and yeah. Let's say it's, a, it's like a 10 man unit running mm -hmm. into like a bunch of five man guardsmen, so they could just keep going. And it felt like time dilation to your point, yeah. And it's like, how many times are you gonna do something in one turn? I'm just gonna check, we're still recording, keep talking, yeah. So, uh one might note this is where they could type things up in the beta test by making you uh, not be able to like shoot more after one of these advanced reactions of shooting. Yeah, and then um, of course you, the problem then is the more limits, the more things you have to remember. Yeah, so uh, the issue with reactions, in my opinion, is that while good intention to let you have some interaction with your opponent, you can take over their turn. Um, yeah, and the unintended consequence there, even if both sides like yeah. it, is what we'd call decision paralysis. Because normally when it's, it, let's say it's Horse Heresy 1, when it's my movement phase, other than Deep Strike or Intercept, very few things have me going, oh, I have to be careful. Really, the order I do it in matters only in the sense of blocking in my own troops. If I move a tank to block you know, a, a yeah. squad of infantry, well, that's just dumb on my part. I should have done it the other way. But now you have this added like, oh no, I silly moved within 12 inches of this unit and now gets to interrupt my turn. Fuck with my ability to make decisions, which is, when you're fighting war, that's what disruption does, but there's like a cadence to this game that you want to get in under four hours maybe. It is, yeah. Expanding that, and then here's the other problem. This is the key one. One-on-one, -on -one, this may not be a big deal. Very points depending. You can't go too high or too low. But think about 2v2s or 3v3s or me mega battles. You can't have like a mega reaction in one area of the board that's... Yeah. 12 like twelve feet long by 4, where it's like this giant causality fuck fest, and no one can even do their shit because you're all waiting to see the results. Mm -hmm. If it's a game, the, the benefit of its current iteration is it's turn-based. Like, you're not really interrupting my turn. My turn is my own. You might want to be present to roll and, and see that I'm not cheating. But that was the nice thing about coming back to 30k after playing Titanicus, <laughs> where it's like, it's endless, like, I go, you go. If both your both opponents play when they're tired... The game is twice as long because you have like decision fatigue. Yeah, like, no you other. forget you forget what's oh, shot. Man. Right? Yeah, we you have forget counters. Everything. We have to we keep have, activation tokens for everything. We have so much like memory aids for AT. And you can still have a problem where like me or him will move the wrong terminal and not realize it, and then like five and, and five shit, seconds later, happens in AT does, where man. where a titan will the machine spirit will awaken. It'll interrupt its action to shoot with its gun. And then it can and you forget where you are. Yeah, you interrupt that to shoot with the yeah. same gun. You think you it's your have... shooting phase, and they're like, "Wait, no, it's your shooting yeah. phase." Yeah, you like... can have like a mini shooting yeah. phase in the movement phase. Yeah, I say shooting turn. Maybe. Yeah, but like, not everything has happen. to be alternate activation. Yeah. Alternate activation has a lot of interactive upsides for kill team and smaller games. But a game where people regularly bring like a hundred models to the table, it's really not that great. When I hear players going, "Oh, finally, I was going to do it in my turn." Well, buddy, are you fucking Borg? Like, why are you playing this? If 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 you're so ADD, you, you're, are you on your phone your whole time when your opponent's asking you to roll? Because that's no fun either. If the argument is you have to be constantly entertained, you're not playing the, the proper game. I'm just going to say. I think... There's better I games think, I'm going to say... Kill team. Bluntly. 
Um, we'll play guilty. The people who felt like they had low interaction on their opponent's turn were getting shot off the board. We're also not learning. And it's probably because their boards were fucking terrible. Yeah. Uh, or they played without terrain rules. Yeah, that's part of it. Um, or their lists were really fucking bad. Like, that can happen too. One of the two things. things. Talking reactions, we're talking our lack of enthusiasm for them. Yeah, and... I wanted to make a point, though, going back to the AT yeah. example. AT is a really cool game, but there's a lot going on. There's, there's a lot of core stuff, there's a lot of orders, a lot of weapons, a lot of things. When you add stratagems to AT, it can be very taxing. For yeah. one, remembering to use them. Some of them are visual. You put down a little bunker, it's there. Some of them, it's a trump card gotcha that, like... You slam down. You slam yeah. down and, and, you know, your opponent loses his mind like Vox Blackout or something. And again, I get why people hate these. And once we started playing without them, we kind of were like, oh, it lets us focus on orders and more of the core game stuff. It really sped up the game. Well, not only that, but I felt like we were playing better and we were able to just focus what was in front of us as opposed to constantly worry our opponents got a trump card or some yeah, silly thing. Speaking of trump cards... Shooting. Uh, the the Legion exclusive once per game ones are very much trump cards. So and that's you, also where we see expansion from a few a turn to potentially many a turn. Well, like kind of, kind of, kind of. So here's a good example of like the trump card in this. You could have stuff that's pretty thematic. Yeah. Let's say you're Death Guard. You're getting shot. There's is you get a four feel no pain, and after the they're done shooting, you get to move closer because they're kind of marching forward through the fire. You're like, okay, that ain't too bad. Yeah. And then you go, okay, let's say you're a Night Lord. You're getting charged. You go, I get to fall back in auto rally. And like, that's your... Right. That's yeah, yeah. your that's yours. And you're like, okay, that's also maybe not too bad. Yeah. Let's say you're a world leader. They're shooting you. You go, I'm going to get a feel no pain. Five up. Now I'm going to charge you. And you... I think I know where you're going with this. Okay. Now you don't get to overwatch, uh, as it explicitly states. And now you get charged in your shooting um, let's say your white scars, they move in, every unit within 12 gets to move in any way. Let's say it's away, sure. but you get to move right away. Um, and you're like, holy shit. So like you have... That one mistake led to a lot of changes. Yeah. A lot yeah, of they, it can really affect the game state. Yeah. It is very much a gotcha. Yeah, it's, and you're going to learn that and then... It's piled on top of other ones, right? Because, right. like, they don't have to use that. They could use normal fallback reaction. Right. They could use... Uh, the world leaders could use I shoot you in return reaction or evade. Um, it, it could it, pile on to get it, an infinite overwater it intercepted. It feels on, but it's also done in a way that's very hard to extricate it out of the game. Yeah, it, it, it takes a little bit of... Way work too. Well, they've done it in a cynical way in the sense of people are territorial. They really like their legios. That's also one of the upsides of 30k. People are very dedicated. Yeah. But if you make half or all their rules tied into these reactions, it's very hard to then tell them, well, don't do not do anything that makes your legio special. Yeah. So I get it. But to me, this doesn't make me want to play so, this edition. And the, the ultimate kind of um, integration and over-the-top example of the reactions is uh, Horus's ability in version 1. So the earliest playtest, hopefully it's changed, but going off the information we know, uh, Master of War, it lets you use a reaction for every unit in every phase. Uh, probably up to the cap of yeah, 3. and then extrapolate that with scale of a 3,500 point game. <laughs> yeah. But still, like, let's say it's capped at 3, but that means every turn, it, during that turn when you move, up to three of their units can do something on your turn. Yeah. Um, not counting the intercept that can override, like go past the cap. Your turn. Yeah, <laughs> if, if you've lost your turn, yeah. the Sons of Horus get... You now share your turn. Yeah, it's the, our turn, Sons brother. of Horus now get three turns. We're still recording. Effectively. Um, now, there, there's, of course, ways if you really don't like them. I've A lot of the feedback I've seen is that people are concerned about the current state of reactions. There's definitely ways to house rule revert. Um, if that's worth the effort is a, its own question. I was just going to say, if, if you see the value. Um, but th there's definitely ways of simplifying it. You could say um, Overwatch returns to how it was. 
you could say you only get intercept if you own the intercept war gear, and then the rest you do not get. My issue with all of it is if you're trying to sell me on doing the new edition, I, my retort would simply be, or we could play what's already committed 90% to memory and spend money that would be better spent on adding to our collection of models, uh, whether third party or GW or both, or, or you know, yeah. bits to make them cool. I don't want to shit on second edition, but like I don't think it's going to lead to this renaissance that people think. I'm trying not to be super negative. For me, it's great because we get plastic models. I just don't think everyone's going to drop ninth and play 30k. And if they are, I don't think we're going to be playing a better game. So kind of going back to my, my thesis of uh, decisions and consequences. Right. Um, the two reactions, or I guess one real reaction that replaced uh, special rules, which, you know, the two of them. So you have intercept and you have evade. They replace special rules in more gear. Um, Previously, those did not let you shoot in right. the next turn. You gave up your shooting to do it preemptively. And there was that weird thing where or, you jinked in the enemy's turn. Was yeah, it? so you, yeah. for jink, you give up your shooting um, to get a better defensive stat, intercept, you'd shoot early. You yeah. didn't get to shoot. That was a decision you made. It had a consequence. Absolutely. And now, there is no consequence. If you have a freebie point or two, that means you can do it. Uh, why not get a 5-up effect of Feel No Pain from shooting? And your vehicles can do that if they're not immobilized. Your Rhino can do it. Yeah. Um, the benefit of one of the Javelin's special rules is that it can re-roll it. Super. So you want to probably save it for your Javelin. Um, but anything can go to Jink. Uh, Yay. With no downside. And again, I, I like consequences i like kind of hard decisions um we'll look, tactical decisions we play a, a game where we both start with the majority of our forces on a board with the exception of reserves and they, they whittle down and the amount of things you roll and, and things you decide on in theory would be reduced turn mm -hmm. by turn that's sort of the cadence of the game and that's fun and a lot of our games the way we play them are pretty close we basically just go three to five objectives Area terrain matters. It's not just beating your share your opponent. It's like, can you beat him and hold it, right? Yeah. Um, because there's a balance to that. If it's just tabling your opponent, you don't care about the lines when they're broken. You just keep pushing in. With our games, we go, I don't want to go too deep. I kind of want to secure what I have yeah. and take it from there. Maybe there's more reserves coming. But it feels more like how a real battle cadence goes. Like, I get people want interactivity, but, like, that's... Why do you want that out of a turn-based game? Like, I never thought chess was better if I could just pull out a card. Like, like it, I don't understand. Uh, I'm a visual guy, too. My memory is not perfect. I'm very much dealing with what I see. I think that's just me. I mean, that's... It, it's definitely uh, an area of weakness for, yes. uh, for gotcha mechanics. I'll give you a last word real quick. It might not be the real one. I'm just triple checking what's yeah. recording. Um, I guess, kind of, if we do have time, we'll talk about uh, reserves. So, uh, the last kind of point I was going to make in this brief overview of the core rules was uh, reserves. Because yeah. if you heard me complaining about reactions and intercepts, especially, and how you could get so many intercepts, you right. might be thinking, oh, like, does it really matter? If you're the guy who hated, you know, someone dropping a Leviathan in front of you, I kind of get, like, this sounds good. Yeah. And you might be thinking, like, does it really, like, matter how much reserves are going to happen? So, reserves... Uh, you have like four different types now. You have normal reserves. You walk in from your board edge. Uh, you can shoot. You can't charge. Same so always. Yeah. Yep. Uh, you make roll for each unit that's in reserve. See if they come in. Boom. I uh, don't remember the roll. Um, but then they changed deep strike and outflank, and they added subterranean, which so the trail. Yep. Uh, those you group all your deep strikers into one drop. You have let's say the chaplain and the Javelin that can deep strike. They're deep striking. You make one roll for the group. It's either in or it's not. Um, then what happens, you pick your first guy. So I pick my chap. He's going here. You roll the scatter him. Let's say he hits. Boom. Comes in. Um, then you can overwatch. Bah, 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 bah. Boom. Then I pick my second unit. I can put it, I believe, anywhere within 12 inches. Um, choose your destination. 
you roll a dice on a one and six, your opponent can kind of disrupt it and put it somewhere else. If not, it hits. Yeah. Okay. There's no scatter. Or delay. Or delay. Yeah. Boom. And then you keep on going until your. And we don't know gone. if you like that yet. Yeah. So you keep on going until your pool's gone. You might be thinking, okay, so it's kind of more concentrated. Yeah. Um, you don't get any more deep strikes. Hey, okay? you can't split your deep strikers into different groups. Keep going. I'm just gonna make sure we're recording. <laughs> one time only deal. Yeah. You're thinking, okay. I don't get why you freak out about the deep strike or the intercept, you know, like people might not spam intercept that much. Uh, next part is if you're within six inches of the deep strikers, you have to take a pinning test. And you're like, okay, shit, like pinning AOE, eh, uh, general res leadership is down across the board. Um, pinning prevents reactions. So you're like, oh, you know, there's some counterplay. Yeah, okay. And then finally, if my guy's still alive from all of that, all all the stuff, this stuff, I can charge. Um, I can charge out of deep strike. I can charge out of uh, outflank. You can't really charge out of subterranean assault because you need to be in the transport. The transport you can't charge it. Um, so you're like, oh, okay. Well, chopping in a, a three attack chain sort of thing doesn't really matter. But when I start piling in terminators for imperial fists or night lords. Um, Elite assault pack units like the Blood Angel Spear Guy. Expensive units. Expensive units, ones that will crush things with their melee. You start going up, hmm, maybe I don't want to be charged right out of Deep Strike with a chunk of my army being pinned and having it just like chewed right up. So I will naturally invest in the Augury Scanner. Right. Which will then give every unit with it a free intercept, which will turn into my army will shoot you when you come down out of deep strike. They will shoot you in return if you try and shoot from your deep striking unit. And then they will definitely overwatch because they don't want to be charged by a clump of units coming in off of deep strike. And this can have your day. unintended effects where their thought might be, hey, we have an answer now for the people who are bringing a lot of alpha strike. This might make someone go, instead of having a bit of Alpha Strike, I'll just go all the way fucking in yeah. because you're, you're forcing yeah, my hand. You, you, made, you to, made me have to go all in. Yeah, you have, to, you have to saturate targets. So something might make it in. Because let's remember, all this is that full ballistic skill. That's going to be a very eventful turn one and then a very sour it's, turn two. Turn two. It's turn two. <laughs> two, two. Yeah, yeah um, because pause included. Oh, Looks right, like we're, battery's out. All right. Gods of war. May your hammer be mighty.